Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Game Night. I'm Dan, here as always with Mex and Steve. And we're going to talk to you about the things we care about, Vigi Games. Yes. Steve, back again yes. after a little short hiatus. How are you doing? Uh, great. <laughs> you sound great. <laughs> Nothing could possibly be better at all. It's... Well, in your break from Game Night, have you been playing any games? Uh, I did break down and bought a new video card because my old, oh God, uh, no, I don't have it around me. It's my old one was like ranked on the hierarchy chart at like 72nd or something like that nowadays, but it's been a workhorse. It lasted me about five years mm -hmm. and that's pretty good. It, it made new games lay a, a bowl. But that's about it. Uh, so I knew it was time for an upgrade because eventually the new gen stuff is going to hit sales that I want to play, like uh, Monster Hunter World. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in picking up right away, but that's the game I want to play. Or like when I would play Skyrim or Fallout 4, I could play them on like medium low, but you couldn't really get like a really good feel for it. They were kind of ugly. Not that they're super pretty games to begin with. So the Bitcoin crash had led to a whole string of um, pretty decent sales on eBay. So I picked up a uh, 1070 for like 200 bucks. Not bad. Yeah. So um, to stretch it out and test it, I did a little bit of... Uh, Far Cry 5, because it was still installed, and that looked really good. Nice. And <clears throat> I played Ark Survival Evolved for a well, little that bit. Game, that game plays like dog shit on even good computers, so how'd that, oh. how'd that work for you? Um, A lot better. Yeah. Uh, every, everything's like maxed out and ultra and smooth. So And it's weird, though, because uh, I played that game with Shank, and we just did our own server. Mm -hmm. and it was before you could even modify any of the options on the server so we're playing a game that's made for like 50 to 75 people on this island just the two of us against everything on the island mm -hmm. and we played it for a couple hundred hours and built a bunch of sweet bases and then i went back once or twice by myself but there's been so many updates that i'm like there's like 200 dinosaurs and i'm staring at one and i'm like i don't know if this eats plants or me and i'm just guessing and then uh, a giant raptor bird threw a chunk of shit at me, and I died. So that's pretty much that game in a nutshell. That seemed that seemed they must have optimized it a lot better from the last time that I've seen anybody play it. Because my old roommate back in college had two 980 Ti's uh, SLI and was having a hard time keeping a solid frame rate. Granted, I think he was trying to play in 4K, but it wasn't great. Yeah, I had to bust everything down to almost minimal when we first played it, but it was really poorly optimized because we played it when it was still in early access and it left it... that a long time ago. Oh, really? We're, we're I didn't in, like... even realize it was. I, I knew they caught a bunch of flack for putting out expansions for a game yeah. that was still in early access. I didn't realize they had actually gone yeah, there's, by with a... They're about to release the third one. So, yeah, it's, it's good. It's fun, but... Um, then I picked up on the Halloween sale Graveyard Keeper, which has the graphics of a Super Nintendo game, and I've been playing that every night for the past week. So You're I'm prob really... probably holding a pretty steady frame right there. Yeah, pretty pretty good. I could probably play it on my last gen phone. Yeah. So uh but yeah, I'm really enjoying that one because it's a lot like Stardew Valley, mm -hmm. or if you've never played that, uh like a Harvest Moon. Yeah. But the thing that sort of, I'm not going to say ruined, but screwed over uh, Stardew, Stardew Valley for me is the game's on a timer. Because months go by and you switch seasons and you lose your crops. Yeah. And you have to go to sleep at night. So there's a timer on each day. And if you don't get back to your bed in time, you pass out and you can lose items or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be a relaxing game for me to play. And that's not relaxing when I have a timer ticking away. So this game is still sort of in uh, a 
phase of early access mm -hmm. but there's basically no consequences for doing anything so i'm sitting here gardening gardening and this donkey is just dropping off dead bodies in front of my house and i'm like i'll either throw those in the river or just let them sit there I'm like, I, don't, I don't care nobody gives a shit i can do whatever i want and then they're like hey you should be the pontiff of this church and do sermons and i was like yeah sure i'll get to that when i get to it we could do burn me as a witch you know whatever so uh it's extremely relaxing because there are no consequences so i'm free to just build and do what i want and uh that is really what I need right now. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. Good yeah. stuff. Max, anything new? Um, Game-wise, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of this lately. Um, Pokemon Go that, had an that, update. That, that looks, that looks yeah. real. <laughs> That's going to get clipped out. No, no. <laughs> you want that in. Pokemon Go has an update where like it um, tracks your steps off your um, health app on your phone. Um, so instead of walking around, you can basically just go like this and get steps, um, which counts towards like your your buddy getting uh, candies or hatching eggs and stuff. Um, so I've been like sitting on my couch, just like moving my phone up and down to uh, hatch my eggs. So but it, Ryan, it's... Wait, you have to get a, a piece of string and tie it onto your phone. Mm hmm. And then put that in front of a fan and just have it blow back and forth while you're sleeping. <laughs> well, I at work we have um, these little things that like teeter back and forth like this. And but so like my great idea was to put it on the end and just run it as fast as it would go, and hopefully like I would get like thousands of steps while I'm sitting there for half an hour. But it, I think it was just like not enough of a movement that it didn't count it as steps. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out a way to do this, to get maximum amount of candies with minimum amount of walking. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing this week. You know, aside from uh, Magic Arena, I'm always playing Magic Arena, so. That yeah. reminds me of one of those stupid memes that I saw that was, um, a Fitbit is just a Tamagotchi, but the stupid creature you're trying to keep alive is yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and i read that and i was like ah shit because i looked at my like smart watch that's all about fitness stuff and i was like fucking things nice yeah yeah i mean it's um i like that they put this update in because before like um it would go off the gps through the um pokemon go app so mm. like if i had the app on in my pocket while i was cutting the grass it would barely register that i moved anywhere even though i walked like maybe two and a half miles cutting the entire yard um so like you would barely get any credit for moving at all but now that it goes off your steps through your iphone app like you'll get full credit for that which is awesome so um yeah i mean other than actually walking you can just move your phone up and down so yeah. Well, that I mean that was that was one of the main reasons why I stopped playing Pokemon Go to begin with is because I couldn't keep the app open long enough and I wasn't getting credit for any of the steps I would take. Yep. So I wasn't I had all these like you know two kilometer three kilometer eggs. Yep. Nothing was happening with. Yeah, them. I mean you don't even need the app open at all. Your phone can be completely well. Your phone probably needs to be on, but mm -hmm. you can have like everything shut off basically, and it'll still count everything because the app I guess always has the step counter running. Um, mm -hmm. through yeah, the health your, app your phone depending on what it is most of them have fitness stuff that you literally can't turn off like yeah. uh all samsung stuff has their samsung fit app yeah which and like the bare minimum shit is always running in the background like the step counter you can't get rid of it yeah <clears throat> so yeah i've been uh very happy i hatched like 10 eggs just sitting on my couch yesterday so uh, <laughs> it's it's been cool uh it's not bad. I sometimes think about getting back into that, but I don't know. I keep I keep shying further and further away from mobile games because they always just, I mean, it makes sense that they're all time sinks, but I just, I can't get into them. I want, I want a game that has more substance and mobile just has not been able to offer that. And I did play Pokemon Go, but when it like first came out, and you'd just see mobs of people walking around all together because it was, you know, like the new hotness thing. 
uh, I actually really enjoyed that for like one week, you know, and like you, Phil, and the Sarahs would go around like in a car. Yeah. Like that was that was a lot of fun doing yeah. that. But yeah. it, it got to the point where we were in between like major updates and there it was pretty bare bones back then. So I was like, I don't really have anything to do. There's no gyms near me. Uh, I live out in the middle of the woods. There's no pokey stops. So I'm running out of balls, running out of, I guess, potions or whatever the hell else came out of pokey stops. And I cheated. So I downloaded an emulator. Mm. And I found out how to make it, how to get around the system so that it would flag you if you basically teleported. So if I was in Hershey and then in three hours I was in California, it would flag my account as cheating. Yeah. But if I did the same thing, but spaced it out by like 24 hours or two days, it would be like, okay, whatever. He turned off his phone and now he's somewhere else. Yeah. So I would turn off my phone for like an hour and then I used the emulator to GPS myself into Hershey Park. And there's like a thousand pokey stops, so yeah. I could move myself up and down like the uh, the water park, and just get like twenty pokey stops, and just keep going back and forth. And then after I found out that there's uh, Pokemon that were kind of like region locked, like if you want water Pokemon, you have to go to the beach. Yep. So I, I turned off my uh, phone for two days, and then I appeared in like I think I went to Ocean City. And I just walked up and down the boardwalk, collecting yeah. Pokestops and water Pokemon. And yeah. then I was like, I'm not really doing anything except sitting at my computer, pretending I'm somewhere else, <laughs> which is exactly what the point of a game is. Yeah. But it wasn't that fun. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now it's basically just a collecting game, pretty much. Um, I don't know. You know, you 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 get to a point where you have basically everything and then there's really nothing else to do until they like um, start doing different events and that sort of thing. Um, Well, the nostalgia also wore off because I only played Pokemon for the maybe like first and second generation. mm -hmm. So now every time they're hyping up an update and they're like, yeah, we're going to put out the ones from sun and moon or whatever the, that Hawaiian episode was and i'm like i don't know any of this shit like i don't i don't care like where's my bulbasaur at yeah oh yeah it's been around i already caught it yeah i mean i only played pokemon red so like everything after that the first generation i have no idea like i didn't watch the cartoon after the first season i guess um so i don't know any of these pokemon so like whenever i catch a new one I have no idea if it's second, third, or fourth generation, you know, because, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, they all kind of look the same, but uh, I have no idea. Or when they add evolutions to stuff that previously didn't, and then I'm looking at something, and I'm like, is that is that new? Yeah. Was that there before? What's yeah. happening here? Yeah. I mean, that's tough, because you don't know what you're supposed to collect. Like, if uh, Generation 5 has, like, 10 Generation 1 extra evolutions, I have no idea. Like, I don't know what Pokemon to hoard up, because you need the candies to evolve the Pokemon. Um, but, again, you know, it's it's just more for um, something to do, I guess. And you don't really have to move to do it anymore. <laughs> so, it's kind of nice. Yeah. But you still have to visit Pokestops and go to gyms and that sort of thing. Um, the... So, you, you do have to, like, get out and do stuff, at least. Yeah, the the idea of being able to sit on my couch and play games because I'm spending time with Sarah or we're watching something I'm not invested in is like driving me towards getting a switch more and more, even Mm -hmm. though I'm definitely not going to buy one anytime soon because I just spent $200 on a video card, but just being able to have a more uh, recent console that you can play real games on and take it with you. The appeal is, is getting stronger uh, like every day. Whereas uh, every time I open up my phone and I'm looking at my current games and apps and I'm like, ah, oh, this stuff sucks. Let me go look at the Play Store. And it's all just the same shit over and over again. The I'm same like, face just going up. Yeah. yeah. And, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm not interested in any game that has any multiplayer aspect and they all do because it's like, oh, play this game where you can progress really fast until you hit a huge wall. You can play online 
against other people for some extra coins or diamonds or whatever and then you can just keep you just keep hitting these huge walls and the only way out is to spend money and there's no actual end so i'm like yeah okay that's so what you're saying is you were not impressed with blizzcon this weekend um you know it's funny i've been spending most of my time on my phone looking at imager mm-hmm. just just going in and seeing what's going on and it's like a stream of conscious through the internet and so blizzard shit was popping up and i was like what is this all about and then then you go back and you look at the backstory and it's like oh man they fucked up yeah they probably shouldn't have hyped up a you know mobile game well the, the most point where they got the, the a room full of the biggest blizzard fans in the world and give them literally something that they would unanimously hate well I, I like catching the story a couple days later after more information has come out than just the initial like outrage. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was an ex-dev, I think he was from Diablo 2, and he was saying that this is to show that Blizzard has gone way out of touch mm-hmm. because if, if it was like how it was back then when the whole entire studio was made out of hardcore gamers, they would have just told you right off the bat like there would have been a line out the door telling you this is a bad idea and not to do it but now it's just a generic corporate environment mm-hmm. and uh then they also let it slip that they were going to tease Diablo 4 and then they decided not to so they just left it hang with the mobile which didn't go well it and makes then- a lot more sense that if they would have had Diablo 4 I mean you saw Microsoft do it with Gears of War at E3 this year where they made a pop, you know, those little pop little figurines with the big heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had a pop version of Gears of War that came out and they, you know, they were teasing Gears of War, Gears of War. Then the pops came out and everyone was like, what the hell is this shit? And then they came back <laughs> and were like, oh, by the way, we're making a real one too. So it wasn't, you know, they didn't leave it. You know, if they would have left it with just the pop version of Gears of War, Microsoft would have been in the shitter. But, you know, they, they did it right. Yeah. Well, the guy had even said that, like, everybody should or would be excited by a Diablo on mobile because that's fine, that's cool, but you don't make that the big ticket item. Mm-hmm. That that doesn't deserve the focus for your event, or the hype level that it had got to. Mm-hmm. And then I watched a couple of clips of the um, the press conference with like the the three dudes oh, on stage yeah. for the event. They did a shit job. Like you could tell they were sweating bullets. And then, oh my god! Yeah, then, they they probably should have just canceled the Q and A because that yeah. ended up just biting them hard in the ass. Especially when the guy got defensive and he's like, "Well, you all have phones, don't you yeah. have a phone?" Yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> the memes coming out of that were great. The one yeah. guy was like, "I don't like anal sex," and he's like, "Well, you have a butt, don't you?" <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what, is any of this static coming through on your side too, or is it just to me? I think Are you guys uh, hearing that? I mean, I kind of hear your muffled, or not muffled. I guess you're breathing sometimes um, into the or microphone. or like a shirt rub yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah the, I don't the know. Lab if it's actually, might, might not be a good idea. But yeah, well, hold on, let me switch over to a new mic. But yeah, so that could have went better. Well, on the plus side, have you downloaded Destiny Two yet? I didn't download it. Um, I claimed it because mm-hmm. I was actually toying with the idea of purchasing that a few weeks or months ago because I was kind of jonesing for a game. Yeah, and that is the I'm going to say the more grown up version or the more well put together version of um, Borderlands mm-hmm. because I'm a huge Borderlands fan, but the art style just wasn't anything I was interested in. Yeah, more, so it's sort of more like cartoony, more the, I guess. Yeah, so or it's like I a, guess uh, cell shaded. Yeah, like uh, comic y, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So does this, does this microphone sound better by any chance? You need it's to very... move it way to your face. Yeah, oh, okay. So loud as hell. So, uh, check one two one two 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 two. two that's two, good. Two, that's two, good one, right there. Two right there. All right. But you got to be like right up into it. <laughs> yeah, my. Uh, this this looks looks pretty good. I. Uh, I moved up. my, off- I moved my office up. around, and I don't have anything near me that I can clamp. Yeah, t- uh, up your volume a little bit. How about now? A little less. Wait, wait, little- no, don't touch it. Just back away. All right. 
Is that good? Uh, no. Move closer, <laughs> but down a little bit. Right. Turn the volume down, back close again. Yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah, yeah. serviceable. It, this is going out in audio format, so it needs to sound good. There, yeah, it's good when you're right up in the mic. Then, All right. then hold the lavalier just like this. The whole <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so uh, Destiny 2. I downloaded it, and I played it for like maybe five hours. I actually kind of enjoy it. Um, I yeah. played a lot of Halo 3 when we were in college, and uh, this game definitely, I guess it's made by Bungie, the same yep. company. Um so obviously it right, reminds me a lot of Halo, um, but I like it. I mean, I haven't gotten very far. I'm only level six, I think. Um, yeah, but you're at the best part of any MMO, which is like the first 10 to 20 levels where you don't know shit. You're having a lot of fun. Yeah. Every time you get anything, it's a it's huge great. upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Where like instead when you're level 60 going on to level 70, you just like, drowning in guns you're like well this one's got 700 points worth of equipment score and this one's got 702 so i guess i'll pick this one up and it's just, yeah it's yeah. it's not quite as good i'm i'm looking forward to getting into some multiplayer stuff some pve once we uh hit the that rating. first raid do you have to be max level for that because i feel like that's gonna take forever um i don't i think there's raids along the way i think there's lower level stuff that you have to do. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if Phil has been playing at all. I haven't noticed. I haven't asked him. If um, you guys are really interested in playing that, I will invest some time into it. Um, because I, I, I mean, it's I don't I don't want to like tell you to you know drop everything and and start grinding because I know that none of us have the time really to put into an MMO. Well, except for maybe you, Max, unless you want to cut into your, you know, time. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I just saw the little replay of us both doing that simultaneously <laughs> down in the window. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that I want to get to that first raid and see what it's like, you know, having multiple people in a in an instance together and see if it's fun. Yeah, can you do it with like three or four? Do you I, know? I, I have I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. I Destiny One was one of two games that I ever took back to the store because I didn't like it so much. <laughs> the other one was Knack. I traded that in for a controller. I don't know what that is. You know, that's, you know, a, that's it's a... a PlayStation 1 launch title that was not good. They made Mac 2. It was a little bit better, but still not very good. You know what? I'm thinking Mac and Me, which I think was a game on the Ma Nintendo. Ma Ma Mac and Me was an E.T. knockoff <laughs> yeah. about a little alien. <laughs> Yeah. And Paul Rudd always plays the clip of it whenever he goes on Conan O'Brien of a kid in the wheelchair flying off yep. a cliff. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's from Mac and Me. All right, then. <laughs> now, uh, you know, maybe it was there might have been a Mac and Me video game. I don't know. They, they, I mean, LGN made video games for things, so. Yeah, I think it was on the Angry Video Game Nerd, and there was a game called, I think it was Mac something. It was actually about McDonald's. There was definitely an NES McDonald's game. Yeah, because he reviewed it and. A while ago, I wound up watching his whole library again, but um, it's yeah, called I, MC Kids. Oh, yeah. I just kind of in my head put the Mac there, but yeah, um, I would be into that, especially if every once in a while you guys want to try a raid or just play together, because yeah. co-op is like my thing. I don't yeah, like definitely. I don't like PvP just because by my own nature i don't like people fucking with me while i'm trying to do stuff which is why i never did pvp servers and like wow or any other game just because mm -hmm. i don't want to be out trying to level up doing an obnoxious quest that i'm just trying to get over with where i'm like i need 40 fucking raptor heads and every time i kill one raptor he's not dropping his head so i gotta kill a thousand raptors and then some dick wad who's like 20 levels higher just stabs you in the back and it's like great now i gotta run all the way out here <laughs> get my body get res sickness go find more raptors and the motherfucker stabs me in the back again because he's spawn camping and i've never like, i never really had a lot of problems and I, I played on a pvp server on wow and it it really didn't i didn't run into a whole lot of people i mean there every once in a while there'd be just some jackass around there but all you have to do is just shout out and a thousand high levels would come defend you yeah yeah, but it just it's not worth my time because it doesn't do anything for me, so what am I doing? True. I, get I, it. I can I can just join a server and that's just not 
a thing. I don't have to worry about it. And if I want to PvP, you do the whatever it was where you actually like go into the PvP zones and people would get like PvP gear for mm-hmm. it. That I did a little bit of that with some people and that was fun, but uh only when you're successful. That's the thing about PvP for me. It's like gambling where I really like gambling if I'm winning, but Who does losing it? I I hate losing more than i enjoy winning so it doesn't do anything for me because if i'm not winning i'm not having fun and i just want to quit yeah Makes um sense. what about you dan you playing anything um i've just kind of avoided i'm trying to avoid playing red dead redemption 2 the game still has yet to click with me and dolan was giving me shit about it he was saying it's like the best game he ever played and i'm just i just I want to like it. I really, really want to like it, but I just can't. Like, I'm walking around. I'm playing Destiny 2. I was playing Minion Masters on Discord. <laughs> you know, the game that Discord released yeah. or has a, an exclusivity with. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm playing literally everything except Dest- or, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 because I just, I, it, it's just really slow and yeah. boring. That's about it. Yeah, that's too bad because, I mean, it looks like visually looks amazing yeah I, I figured out part of my problem was like the i had the hdr was blowing the screen out too much so everything was just really bright for no reason so i was having a hard time like cause there's not there's a little mini map and they give you pretty good directions of where to go but you still need to know like landmarks and whatnot to be able to navigate the map and i couldn't tell the difference between you know the fork in the road that went back to camp or the fork in the road that led me off a cliff so i was getting lost a lot yeah and the traveling in that game takes a long time so if you get kind of circled around backwards you can waste a lot of time doing that okay well uh we got a little half hour intro here let's say we get into this n64 classic draft all right well um are we gonna skip the the playstation review Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Good. Just, yeah, we definitely need to give you, you a chance to defend yourself because, yeah. I mean, right. you, you had an embarrassing Hold showing. On. Do we have that uh, spreadsheet somewhere? Uh, it's still out in the cloud. So I'm just going to run through my notes in the interest of making this real quick. Okay. And then uh, we can and either talk I'll about I'll make them snide or just... remarks. Sure. Uh, so I didn't expect. I kind of expected it, but I didn't see that there would be a like five or seven game difference between the JP version and the MA version. Yeah, I have to and give you credit on that. You did, you had Devil Dice, and that technically is appearing on the damn thing. So, bravo. And um, they did get more RPGs than we did. And yeah, so I was it, yeah I was surprised I, about that too. I, I thought we were going to get a lot more RPGs. Yeah, I expected that level of RPGs to show up in the NA version, and they totally didn't. So, like half of my games were immediately out because I went heavy into the RPGs, expecting at least two or three more. Sure. And then I went for the heaviest hitters, just trying to get one of those to be picked off for the point. And it just it was a total whiff. Um, let's see. I th- some of these are my own thoughts and i also watched a couple reviewers so some of them are a little mixed but i did think it was odd that they went for um nostalgia picks over the more recent titles so they went with a lot of number one games like resident evil one twisted middle uh, twisted metal one which feels a lot like nostalgia picks even though the sequels are superior but then they didn't go nostalgia with the other games, like just wholesale games. So the message they're sending is very kind of all over the fucking place. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's like they wanted to pick classic or nostalgic games, but failed to pick better games overall. Um, I mean, it could, could be a licensing thing. Um... Yeah, licensing did play a big factor into it. Um, there is a guy here that I, I had to put this in my notes because uh, he basically was said what I was thinking and he goes uh, a critic guy said he thought it was silly that they would leave out games due to high definition remakes but it turned out to be wrong 
he still disagrees. And I was like, that's basically word for word what I would say. I mean, that's here. that that's like, been like part of that's our argument from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. There was, I told was, you what these weren't going to be on, and then you were like, nah, they're going to do it anyways. Um, Konami and Square Enix offered nothing. Uh, sure they, they have they had like one game each yeah. but they offered no other support there was no other uh, rpgs that appeared from square enix and konami totally didn't give them the time of day after what did they put on there metal gear solid uh, metal, gear, metal solid. gear yeah that was that was it uh for rpgs persona i thought was a really weird pick over some of the more well-known ones it's I think, fine i think that's trying to capitalize on the recent success of the persona series yeah uh i think people might be a little bit happier if they would have went with like a xeno gears chrono cross or any of the other like what you really think of when you think of a playstation rpg it's mm -hmm. really nice and interesting that they put it on here but i don't think it's what people wanted which is the message that you keep getting when you go look at articles or forums related to the PlayStation Classic is tons and tons of people jump ship uh, because they're like, my favorite game isn't on here. And half of the games that people were talking about were ones that we had already shut down because there was licensing issues like Tony Hawk, Gran Turismo, uh, the wrestling games, and they just didn't have a concept of that. But there's plenty of better free picks that they just either couldn't get or didn't get and it mm -hmm. it it's not upping the value of this game there's a lot of people that are like well i'll still pick it up because there's one or two games i really like but the rest of it feels like bulk i mean uh, it's this is the first of the classic systems that i really i mean playstation has been doing a pretty good job with their ps classics you can download almost all of these games on your playstation 4 as it is um what Nintendo did was completely do away with their virtual console when they launched all this shit. So unless you already had them downloaded on your Wii or Wii U, the only way to get a lot of these old games was to buy the classic system. So yeah. That was a running thread that I was seeing as well, where a lot of people were hoping or expecting a, an online capability yeah. to download. Because if you have an online shop with this and you can fit a handful of games you eliminate all the issues with the bad picks and then you can sell the more popular games for like 10, 15, 20 bucks and they'll still sell. I mean, mm -hmm. shit, you can buy Final Fantasy Tactics on mobile, but it's going to run you like 15 bucks, but mm -hmm. people still buy it. Sure. No, uh, I, I think they missed the boat in not, I mean, especially for the $100 price point and not putting this thing online and putting a limited amount of like the PS1 classics that are in the current PlayStation shop you know, over to this. Um, doesn't seem like they had popular choices overall. They were good, but not great. Because uh, I, I know everywhere there's all these picks where people dissed a whole bunch of games, but particularly for me, I was I thought uh, GTA was a weird pick. So mm. was Destruction Derby and Rainbow Six. Like they're fine inclusions, but there's so much better options that you could put out there that it just seemed like a waste of space. A lot of people said that about Siphon Filter, but I enjoy Siphon Filter, so yeah, I yeah. didn't put it on there. I disagree with that. Uh, Siphon and then Filter I'd, is a great game. I had never heard of Jumping Flash, even though it was released in the first like five titles. Yeah, that was so a launch and, title. Yeah, I went and looked it up, and I was like, what is this garbage game? It's like a first-person bunny-hopping game. And it's like you you missed out on a treasure trove of games for this outrageous piece of shit. And um, I mean, my thinking all along was they were going to have like maybe five really good games and then the rest was just going to be filler anyway. Just filler. Yeah. Uh, so I said, it seems like they lack more true classics over trying to cover all bases and all game types because they were spread out all over the place. Um, everyone hates how the best games are missing but everyone has a different selection of what those best games no, are I mean, like, you can't you're never you could put 
you know, 20 absolute bangers on here and somebody would be like, oh, where, where's uh, where's Worms Armageddon? That's my favorite game. Hey, yeah. hey, why is everyone bashing my picks? Because your picks are really bad. I don't know why I was so nice to you the entire night. <laughs> but yeah, like every everywhere I went, they were like, well, they don't have this game on there, so it's worth shit. And then somebody would be like, there's no this, there's no this, there's no this. And, and I was like, yeah, but you're naming like 10 games and then four other people are naming 10 completely different other games. Like there's so much stuff, but the common thread there is like all those games were at least still classics. Whereas uh, when's the last time you heard anybody talk about fucking destruction derby or rainbow, especially for the fact that destruction derby two is a better game. Yeah. Well, that went to the, my point earlier was like, they picked a lot of uh, the the, the one first gen games trying to, it made, it made it feel like they aimed for nostalgia, but then they picked games that nobody gives a shit about. The, the really egregious one, and I don't think that... I, don't, I have no idea why they even thought to put this on here, but uh, Rainbow Six is a shit port of the PC version. Yeah. It's not It's not good. It's a, it's a legitimately bad version of that mm-hmm. game, and I don't know why they would even want to put that on there. I don't know what Ubisoft was thinking throwing that yeah. out there. Um... Oh, last two things here. Well, I mean, Rainbow uh, Six is pretty popular um, on PC right now, isn't it? Yeah, Rainbow Six Siege and uh, Wildlands were, you know, fine. Yeah, Siege still sees a lot of play. Uh, I do. I watch a lot of uh, Kotaku's highlight reel on YouTube, mm-hmm. and it gives you a pretty decent feel of what people are currently playing because you're going to get the most clips out of those games. And like right now it's just full of red dead redemption shit. And right yeah. before that it was just everything Spider-Man, but uh rainbow six is like, there's always one or two videos on there. So people are still, or not rainbow six, um, siege siege. Yeah. Like there's, there's always videos. So people are still playing that. I mean, that's one of those, it's a, it's a game as a service. It has legs. As long as they keep putting little incremental updates, they're going to keep getting people to play it. So and supposedly that's one of those games that has gotten better over time. That you know they're they're supporting, and you know they they have faith in it, so they're not dumping it. Yeah, I think it's also fairly unique in its environment, where there's destructible environments, which are uh, a big bonus because almost every game is like here's basically an uneven but almost flat plane. Go shoot each other or get something from point A to point B. Where this one is like these assholes are in a building they get x amount of time to barricade it and then the other guys can like spy on them you can blow open a wall and just rush through you can toss a grenade on the ground the floor above them and drop down and be like surprise assholes and yeah, shot it, in the face. it's definitely like, a fun it's definitely a fun game to watch i'm worried that you know if i tried to get into this now the meta is too deep and people just understand it so much that me as a new new would just get steamrolled immediately yeah that's why uh, I don't like those kind of games, especially when they've matured. Because for us as Magic players, that would be like saying, all right, I want to learn Magic, so I'm going to buy this starter deck, and then I'm going to go to a Pro Tour exactly, and, <laughs> and see how far I can get, which mm-hmm. is nowhere, and it's <laughs> going to be totally demoralizing. Um, I had this thought that not anybody had said yet, but I have this feeling that if this sells well, instead of moving to generation two where they do a uh, playstation classic and move to a playstation two classic that they're going to do a second playstation one but be a dual shock version so that there's not only more games but they held you have the opportunity to hold back some of the missed classics to get a second full round of sales because then you you can put like Resident Evil two or three, and now you actually have the Dual Shock for it, or uh, Ape Escape, or some of the RPGs that people were clamoring for that just didn't get the time of day. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is going to sell that well. Are you going to buy it? Is it no. worth a hundred dollars to you? No, there's pretty much no games on it that are worthwhile. And... You, you can go out and buy a Nintendo 2DS for eighty bucks with a game. I I was so hyped up for the Super Nintendo Classic that uh, I was so happy when Phil 
got a couple copies and I was able to buy one from him. That was like my birthday. Mm -hmm. And and I haven't really played it that much because the time it doesn't really present itself as being able to, but um I'm still really happy I have it because those games are just available for me to jump into whenever I want and they're they're so good that mm -hmm. uh that's a quality pickup. Whereas there's nothing that excites me about the PlayStation Classic. The Final Fantasy VII is on like every yep and every, your phone. Yeah, uh, it's it's ubiquitous, and I wouldn't pick it up now because that's a huge investment of time to play through that story. And probably in the next five years, they're going to do the redux of that. Yeah, they keep dicking around with it. One, but... one of these decades, that's going to come out. Yeah, I think it was like two, three years ago I saw that they had released a couple like screenshots or like a five second video clip of some proto build. And it was like a weird amalgamation of uh, Final Fantasy, is it 15, Ryan? The one where the dudes are in the car? Yep, 15. Yeah, it was like that kind of action RPG, but built around Final Fantasy 7, which I'm sure they can make it work. But uh, I had heard if it's still what they're doing that they're going to release it in chunks so the first chunk you'll get will be the beginning of the game to the escape from midgard which i think is like disc 0.5 out of the three or four discs so i don't know i have hope that it'll be released but i think i i had this conspiracy theory that i always would talk about with um my friends up north where I was like, Final Fantasy VII is one of those back pocket games where when Square Enix starts to lose money, they're just going to whip it out as like a redo. And um, that's when they were releasing just shit games. It was like the Final Fantasy, what was it, 13? Well, they, is... the, like the six different versions of 13, Lightning, yeah. Love Returns, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, nobody wanted those. They were no. They weren't making a lot of money. Final Fantasy 13, 12, whichever the second online one was, 14, came 14. out. That one was bombing really hard. It was before they destroyed the entire universe and remade the game. Uh, and I was like, it's going to come. They're going to announce it. And two years later, they're like, guys, we're remaking Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> I was like, I knew it. I've been talking about this for 10 years, and it's happening. And then they started making successful games. And now it's like, where to no, go? Never mind. Where is it? Yeah, they're, they're like, we're just going to put this back into yeah. where we need our money for later. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And the last note that I have for the PlayStation is my single victory over you, Dan. You had said that you didn't believe that they would put any MA titles on. Yes. Because little yes. grandmas would do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah yeah but the thing I'll is think... i wasn't i wasn't so confident in that that i didn't draft a an actual yeah, you... <laughs> winner so <laughs> yeah you almost you're sitting there thinking about breaking your own rule at the end agonizing over it and i'm like yeah they're gonna do it everybody yeah. knows they're gonna do it i, I had at least i thought that one i was less be. i was less confident that there wasn't going to be mature rated games i was a hundred percent confident that symphony of the night was not going to be on the damn thing like i would have bet a lot of money yeah i there's so much love for that game that I was like, they if they want it to sell, they gotta put it on there. But they don't uh, really Konami want Konami doesn't give a shit. They want you to buy their twenty dollar copy of it. They don't want you to to get the royalties or whatever two dollars per unit they're gonna get off of a sale of a classic system. Yeah, it just annoys me though because I keep seeing um, advertisements now for whatever that one is called, where it packages like Rondo yeah. of Blood and Symphony Requiem of Night. or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I really want to play that game, but I'm not going to buy a fucking PS4. Why don't you put it on some other platforms, like maybe PC or, hey, this universal platform that's yeah. going to be just plugged into TVs that, you know, has classic games that people want. I guess. All right, moving on. Moving on. All, All right. right. So uh, Gaming Intel uh, website that's been pretty good about their leaks recently has said that there's going to be another Nintendo Direct in November after the Smash Direct that we had. What was that last week or two weeks ago? I guess last week. 
And they're all signs are pointing to tomorrow, which I don't think is going to happen because we haven't heard anything about it yet. But we're probably going to have another Nintendo Direct. And these uh, November Directs usually mean a new classic system. And if we're going in order, the next in line would be the Nintendo 64 Classic. <laughs> so as the, the Twitch channel that finds any reason to draft a thing... We're going to sit here tonight and we're going to draft the games we think are going to be on the Nintendo 64 Classic. There is a slight caveat to this, though, and that's that, uh, Dan, what is your experience with the uh, Nintendo 64? Oh, I had one. I probably played 50% of the library because I used to ask for nothing but blockbuster gift cards for every birthday and holiday. So yeah. very familiar. Okay. So that puts you at a nearly exponential uh, lead knowledge wise over us because neither Ryan and I had one. Uh, I didn't know anybody who did. I, ex I opted out of the N64 for the PlayStation because that's where the Final Fantasies were going, and that's where I needed to be at that point in my life. So the only knowledge that I have comes from my like 70-year-long subscription to Game Informer, or whatever it was back then, uh, that I would see games, and I was like, oh, this looks like fun. I'll never play that. Uh, so I actually was sitting here before I knew I was going to be able to come on thinking of like those middling games that like you know the semi-cult classics that might make it on and i was like oh what's the name of that game i remember thinking it had a really cool name it's it might be on there and then i looked it up and it was uh i was like what was it nights into something nights into dreams that'll be on there that's a fucking sega saturn game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so here's the thing i never had a playstation <laughs> so it it all rules are out I barely played any PlayStation games, and it, it's just all about getting lucky here. Yeah. The thing is, Nintendo owns yeah, well, most of their IP. And yeah, if you look the at the, the lineups so... of the other classic systems, it's mostly Nintendo games. Yeah, so... it's, it's actually super easy to draft. So Ryan and I were making the joke that we're just going to go down the like top 100 selling games, just like the first 30 of them, and everybody's just going to pick... Uh, like i'll take one you'll take two you'll take yeah three. we're just gonna go I in was, order of the best selling games <laughs> i i figured you guys were looking at that list so i actually looked at it myself and uh, you're you're pretty safe there are a few potential hiccups and i'll point them out as we go along the way but uh let's let's get after this we're well, 51 minutes in and dude. the last time we drafted it took like two hours for us to get through because i couldn't stop making fun of you so let's get let's get uh, after it all right let's the, go Wait, there's there's one more thing that we are lacking in knowledge of, and that's we don't know how many controllers are going to be in it, which has a pretty big impact on some of the games. So, like, I'm assuming, I don't know if there's any legal issues, but, like, GoldenEye 007 is a super, super good bet if there's no issues with it. Literally but nothing but issues, but, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but that's a game that... I don't think has a great chance of being on there if there's not four controllers or at least four controller ports, because that's how lots of people play that game as a four player game. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like a Mario Kart or something like that, you can get away with two, but I mean, that, that was the first console uh, asterisk question mark that had four controllers where it was like, here's, here's a part of the game system. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, so, you had the multi-tap for all the other ones that you could buy an adapter for. A lot of the wrestling games from like yeah. the Super Nintendo era, you but, could play four-player. This, this one was very much like, here you go, four controllers. Go oh, play. yeah. No, this, right. was the, this was the number one big couch co-op, you know, yeah. and you should take that into account. If I had to wager a guess, I'm going to say it's going to come with two controllers, expandable to four. <clears throat> yeah, but would they put a game on there that's really only for four players? I mean, or... GoldenEye is not only for four players. That's, I mean, that's not the reason it's not going to be on well, there. It's no, not going to be on true. there because you have to get, and it's owned by Microsoft. Yeah. But I, I just mean, like, I don't know what else, because I barely looked at this list might be like that where, I mean, you got another game, like perfect dark is also owned by Microsoft. Um, that is 
four player, but they all they all have single player campaigns that were pretty beloved as well. Yeah. So I think you're I, I wouldn't base any concerns off of how many controllers are included in the box. I think that any game is safe. So is anybody if we can all free type into the draft pick, right? Yes. Dan, would you type in for me so I can kind of look and pick what I'm what I'm thinking? Sure. So I don't have to keep doing different tabs. Uh, what's the order? Uh, uh, you're first. Yep, you're first. first. Uh, Super Mario 64. Okay. I think I just got a point. Number one seller for <laughs> Nintendo 64? Uh, it, yep. I mean, that's, that's there's, it. There's literally no reason to put that on there. Nope. Nothing yeah. bad to say about that. You got it. Yeah. There's... They how many Mario games did they cash in on on the other systems? A lot, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, it's the the NES Classic had one, two, three. Doctor Mario. Um, the 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 problem with this N sixty four Classic is we're going on the assumption that there's going to be somewhere around fifteen games. The the NES had in the thirties. The Super Nintendo one had twenty one games. I would imagine this is going to be floating in the the. The 15 to 20 range and how many of these are going to be mario games because you could easily just make a nothing but mario system and it would still be great yeah I th- yeah uh i'm gonna go with mario kart 64 hey the number two pick we are really just going straight <laughs> down this list i would imagine we're gonna start hitting some problems here soon if i don't have the list in front of me but yeah i don't know who owns who i don't know what any of the legal issues are as we go down if you the the Nintendo sixty four was pretty much Nintendo first party games and rare games and rare is owned by Microsoft. All right, so you just like, skip all the rare games and you'll be good. Yeah, maybe. Okay, we'll get there. Well, Go ahead. there goes pick three. Goodbye, Golden Eye. Yep. So pick three becomes <laughs> Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good pick. Um. Yeah. You know Zelda. It, uh, so do. Do you think uh, we're going to have multiple um, series of, you know, in the console? Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you think they 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 would have a shot away? They, you know, the NES Classic had multiple Mario games. It had multiple Zelda games. The Super Nintendo Classic had multiple Mario games. Uh, I think that there's absolutely no reason to steer away from from like if you're you're talking about drafting Majora's Mask right here, I think you're probably in good shape. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pick uh, Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> also, also a very good pick. See, that's that's one of those games that I'm like four controllers. They want to yeah. have four people for that one. Mm-hmm. That and like a Mario Party, four controllers. Yep. Uh, also, we're not doing half points on this one. It's it's the well, actual one it's or It's not or even nothing. a real thing anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Plus, uh, how many would there even be? There's this I mean, there's not... a lot. There's six Mario Party games on this. So pick the one you want. Uh, you're up, Dan. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. I have not been paying attention to any of this, even though this was my idea. I probably should put a list in because I know what games I want, but I don't know what order to pick them. See, I'm going to have a problem once we get past 45 because <laughs> I don't know any other games. Star Fox. Star Fox, okay. Ryan, Good luck. I'm going to teach you my secret here, right? So pick a bunch of games from a single game type and then google up best like selling nintendo 64 rpgs and then pick something off the top five and be like best nintendo 64 racing games and then pick something (laughs) off the top five star fox 64 i never played it i did play one star fox game but i don't remember what it is so maybe i did play that one uh this comment is completely irrelevant (laughs) <laughs> you, you very well might have played that one. That was that was, in my opinion, the best one. Okay, Steve. Uh, I'm just gonna start with the oddball stuff because you're gonna go oddball already. Well, what are you not... gonna go with? Are you gonna go with episode one pod pod racer? No, uh, it's actually not gonna be oddball, but it's gonna be like other assorted picks, not immediately off the top ten. Uh, we're with Paper Mario. Solid pick. 
Solid pick. Yeah, do one of us have to put that in? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot you asked me to do that for you. Yeah, I'm doing on-the-spot research. I don't have time to type. Well, you have to pick two games in a row, so... Yep, you're up then, next. Um, there's no issues with Pokemon games, right? No, Pokemon is a Nintendo-owned private entity in Nintendo. They kind of yeah. let them live on their own, but they're still Nintendo. Part of me wants to just continue with some of the oddball shit and go for, like, Harvest Moon 64, but I'm going to go one down and just pick up Pokemon Stadium. See, I, I know there's going to be at least one Pokemon game on this, and because you're busting out Pokemon early, I think I'm going to bust out Pokemon early, too, but go for a game that was a little off the wall and nobody knew they wanted it until it happened, Pokemon Snap. Uh, I remember being very disappointed when they announced this game because of, I don't want to take pictures of Pokemon. This is stupid. It was like an <laughs> on rails. You rode in a mine cart and you just chucked rocks and then tried to take <laughs> pictures of stuff. I ended up renting this from Blockbuster like four times, hoping to get, you know, you know, just every time I'd take it back, go back the next week and hope that a copy was there so I could rent it again for the next weekend. I was loved this game. So I want to see it. Okay, I'm going to keep the train rolling with uh, Zelda, I guess. Oop, if I can spell correctly. Majora's Mask. Really, really good game. <clears throat> underappreciated at the time, I feel. I, I mean, I underappreciated at the time. There was some, you know, time limit stuff that they introduced in this game that I didn't wasn't quite in love with at the time, but going back to it, it's it's almost a perfect game. Yeah. Um, I guess fourth pick we'll go with uh, Mario Party. The first one. Yeah, the first one. Um, let's see where we're gonna go next. Um, early game. A lot of fun. Could ride a dolphin. Wave race 64. Is that like uh, Echo the Dolphin? No, no. It was a, it was a wave runner game. But oh, okay. uh, you could uh, unlock a dolphin to ride. Huh. Steve? Um, I'm going to go with Nights into Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. I'm sure that the uh, Sega Saturn classic is well on its way. <laughs> I'm I'm really tempted to take Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but something's telling me it's not going to be on there. I mean, there was less licensed music in the Nintendo version because the cartridge couldn't hold the the whole song, yeah. so it was only the first like minute of any song. But you still have some issues with that. Uh. What are the odds a Star Wars game makes it on there? As in licensing pretty, issues. Pretty low. I, I'd, I'd say. say little to no chance that that's going to happen. Because yeah. I, I would put up for Rogue Squadron, because I know that's a big N64 game, but I don't know if there's licensing issues. Uh, we'll go with uh, Turok. Turok 1 or Turok 2? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to decide. Uh, we'll go with one. Fuck it. Looks like they both sold about the same. What's how do you spell Turok? T U R O K. Turok one. Yeah. This why not? game is so bad. It like does not hold up at all. Like it was so back in the day. Like oh man, you're killing dinosaurs. And like the second one had like a nuclear bomb you could set off. It it plays so bad. <laughs> You know, I, I, nev I never played the game, I don't think, but uh, I kept seeing all those, like, the list of the craziest weapons in video games, and almost mm -hmm. every one of them would have the Cerebral Bowler from Turok. It was like a little remote drill that you'd fire, and it would just bore into the enemy's head and then explode. Uh, yep, I do remember that. I mean, there was... I, mean, I don't know. I can't really... There's no glaring issues with it, you know, besides the fact... 
that it would be the first M-rated game on, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, it would be the first M-rated game on any of the Nintendo Classic systems. And I know that you didn't believe me with the PlayStation. I really don't think Nintendo is going to put a mature rated game on this thing. Eh. I guess we'll see. We uh, shall. So my, Steve, my you're still of, on the clock, so keep your research going. So say my level of thought into this is just uh, yeah, pr- I pretty I'm low. Just, I think we're all uh, pretty low right yeah. now. I'm I'm almost wanting Die Katana to be on there as one of the worst games ever made for anything. <laughs> I think there was a video game nerd one about that game. Yeah, there was. Uh, Wave Race? Did somebody already say that? Yeah, Wave Race is already picked. Fuck. Uh, there are so many games, man. You can just pick something. Look, I'm looking at like four different top ten lists, and I keep hitting the same shit. Uh... 1080 snowboarding good pick thanks i just went through a list that's what it says just at least put on a little bit of a show like you know what you're talking about but i don't (laughs) (laughs) um i'm gonna go with excite bike 64 i actually never played this one i played a lot of excite bike on the nes I figure the 64 version has to be 64 times better. Sounds legit. I don't see anything wrong with that logic. Did I unmute myself? Yes. Yeah, you're good. We're going to go with um, Yoshi's story because I feel like he gets left out too much. That's a, that's a great pick. It, it kind of, Yoshi's story is what interact, like introduced us to the modern Yoshi game. The, the solo Yoshi with the, you know, no baby Mario on his back crying, but it's, I think it's good. All right. And then next we'll go with Kirby 64. That's, I mean, it's, you guys are just making this really hard for me to hate. Fuck. You took my game that I had just researched. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. I'm going to go with a launch that was okay it, but if it wouldn't have been a launch title it probably wouldn't have been as great i'm gonna go with pilot wings 64 god damn it stop picking the ones that i just put <laughs> part so that came with the console no there was no pack-in title uh, okay. which was very controversial at the time. you had to buy a game uh my Super Nintendo came with uh, Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. I get two picks, right? Because it goes me yep. and then back. Mm-hmm. Fine. Uh, then I'm going to take Star Wars, Rogue Squadron, and Cruising USA. I uh, definitely one of those is a one of those is a good pick. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't have anything to work with here. <laughs> like, All right, Star Wars, well, Rogue Squadron. These goddamn games were put up by Rare, which you told us not to pick. Uh, I wish I wouldn't have said that because I wish you know then I could have something to say and make fun of your picks. Look, uh, Rogue Squ- Rogue Squadron, if they can get uh, the licensing figured out, it's a it's a banger of a game. I mean, it's so good. I, it was really difficult to play on the sixty four controller. I always got stuck at the point where you had to get in the snow speeder. Snow, what was the thing that used to hook on with the harpoons that used to go around the uh, nerd? Yeah, that would be called the A wing. Is that an A wing? Sorry, my yeah, friend. Where they flew it around the elephant yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an ATAT or an ATST? Uh, big one. The big one in that would have been the ATAT or the AT AT or I don't know. What, I don't know what people call the, it. The little, the little, the two footed ones were the ATST, right? And then the big four footed ones were the ATATs. The big. The giant ones were the ATATs. The small ones, uh, I don't know. It, it didn't matter. Pretty... They fucking sucked. You could destroy them with two logs. Yeah, AT. It was ATST. <laughs> it stood. For, it stood for All Terrain Scout Transport. Yeah, and their weakness was a tree. Ewoks. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Ewoks, man. All right, so. I, wait, we're... there's something I have to say about Ewoks because. Go ahead. It blew my mind when I saw it. 
uh, there was a scene where they captured the heroes and then they like befriended them and they're like, oh no, yeah, you can join us now. And I, I think they had given a change of clothes to Leia and then somebody had written down, they're like, the Ewoks had this change of clothes because they had eaten the previous person because that's what they do is they eat people and people keep well, yeah. forgetting that they do that. Yeah, the, I mean, they, they, they had the like, place to, yeah, they were yeah. trying to have, yeah. So there's they're like banging on skulls. They're like <laughs> they're like actual skulls. They're just like we'll put the helmets over them to make this a little more PG friendly. But there's probably an Ewok sitting there like ripping the flesh and like sucking an eyeball out of a stormtrooper. That I'm <laughs> sure there's some deviant art of all of that right now if you were to go search for it. But it was like oh they're so cute and I'm like yeah they'll eat you like yeah. <laughs> all right so first controversial pick I didn't want to go into this this but I feel like boring draft. Uh, Donkey Kong 64. It's a rare game. A game assist from a company that I told you not to pick from. Hey, I I decided not to go with Star Wars, and then I did. So we're well, just breaking the all only, sorts of norms. The reason I'm going with it is that Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo Classic was on there, and that was also a rare game. So Nintendo owns the rights to Donkey Kong. So Rare can't do anything with Donkey Kong 64. It's not like they can release it on their own, which little known fact, uh, Microsoft actually thought they were getting the rights to Donkey Kong and 007 when they bought Rare because they're idiots. Uh, Max, go ahead. Um, if you I'm pick gonna... my game, I'm going to shank you. Okay, get ready to be shanked. I'm going with <laughs> Mario Golf. Why? I don't know. You're really close to picking my game. No. It's good. Uh, it's a good game. It's uh, a really good game. I have a problem here because I can't scroll down to get picks without moving the spreadsheet. Look, there's there's only 44 on the list of or 45 on the list of best selling, and half of these we're not supposed to pick because they're <laughs> rights locked. Right. So there's like two games left <laughs> for me to pick. So I'm gonna pick one of those two games and go with uh, let's see, how about F Zero X. I think it's good. I think it's a good pick. How many picks do I have left? You have yeah, seven have picks of, left. We have a lot of eight. Picks left. You have eight picks left. But Fuck we're getting God. we're getting into the fun part of the evening where we got to start <laughs> reaching into the. We're scrambling for like last choice shit things you <laughs> things you're having weird flashbacks to last time you stepped into a blockbuster. I, I, I have need, a feeling that we have a of lot games. of the of the the titles that are going to be on this. So. Uh, I'm going to go with another Mario sports game because I'm pretty sure that's what Steve's going to Don't fucking take it. But I think there's a few. Well, there's actually only one left, so I guarantee you I'm taking the one that Steve's going to pick, uh, Mario Tennis. You son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Then I'm going to take... There's still like five other Mario parties. Hey, that you can I already from. decided. I'm taking Ogre Battle 64 <laughs> <laughs> and Kobe Bryant in NBA courtside. Oh. <clears throat> I feel. Uh, wait, there was no. Do you want? Do you want Kobe Bryant in NBA courtside or courtside two featuring Kobe Bryant? They both no. came out. And... Oh, I don't give a shit about that. The first, like Kobe, Kobe Bryant in NBA courtside. Yeah, that, that was that, that was the thirty eighth best selling <laughs> games. Uh, you and your your damn sports games. This is not. That's not going to be on there. I'm, I don't even know. Nope. I I don't have anything left. Find a find a deeper list. There's not that many games for the Nintendo Six. I just dug one out for Ogre. Okay, you're up, Dan. Oh, jeez. I just spent all this time making fun of you for not having a game picked, and I don't have a game picked. I mean, I don't want you to take my next pick, which is going to be A Bug's Life, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> which, by the way, I actually like that movie. Oh, I know what to pick. This is just to piss everybody off that is buying a PlayStation Classic. I'm going to go with Castlevania 64. Really one of the worst 
Castlevania games ever made. They tried to make it a 3D uh, adventure game, and then they released it again. Only you could be a werewolf, but it's the same game. Hmm. It's not a good game, but I'm putting it on there. Max, right. you're up. I'm going to go with uh, Mega Man 64. I never played that one. I don't think anybody did. And let's see. Let's go. Uh, it was with... called Le- Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, which was the re- re- remake where they just made it so that you could be a. a uh... I got Wolf. Mega Man 64 and Bomberman 64. Bomberman 64, I did play. It was okay. Shit, there was a Dance Dance Revolution game on the Nintendo 64. Hmm. Well, this thing was known for like mascot platformers. You, you know, the the three dimensional move the camera around. Oh, shit. I'm going to go with Chameleon Twist because I liked that game a lot. What was that? It was a, it was like a platform, like a 3D, 3D platform, but the mechanic is you could stick your tongue out and grab onto stuff, and like pull yourself over to other platforms. Mm-hmm. So we're starting to get down into the shit. Unless we can, I mean, there's still, like I said, there's still a lot of Mario Party games that you can pick. <laughs> yeah, unless we all fight over sequels. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Steve, you're up. Uh, I'm going to take. Mystical Ninja and Harvest Moon 64. So, Harvest Moon 64. Uh, so, you want Mystical Ninja starring uh, Geomon? Yeah. Okay. Not Geomon's Great Adventure, Mystical Ninja 2 starring Geomon? No. <laughs> okay. Mystical Ninja starring <laughs> Geomon. I actually used to read about that game all the time because i had like this same copy of game informer sitting in the bathroom forever and uh they had no it wasn't game informer it was whatever magazine was like early enough that they would actually have walkthroughs maps secrets oh, like yeah. the full the full-on game for you to try i mean out. nintendo 64 had stuff like that or not nintendo 64 nintendo power had stuff like that i don't know yeah. that's, that's the only magazine that i had yeah <laughs> It it was basically just one of those, but it covered like a, a whole bunch of systems because I had it for the other stuff. And Mystical Ninja was on there, and I would always look at it and be like, "Yeah, this is this is cool. This would be fun to play if I had this." And then I had a another edition that I bought randomly, and I had said the same thing about was it Panzer Dragoon or something mm-hmm. like that. It was another console I didn't have, but I was like, "Yeah, this would be great." So, I had Panzer Dragoon. Orta, the one that came out on the Xbox. How was that? I, I it's a really fun game. Um, you know, it's a star like if you like a Star Fox style game where you know you're flying behind and you know doing all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, where do we go next? I think we're gonna throw another Pokemon game in here. Pokemon right, Stadium Two. Uh, not a bad pick. I don't think there's going to be two Pokemon Stadium games, but I do think that Pokemon Puzzle League might make it in. And I hope I didn't break the document because it's not showing up. Are you guys still there? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I'm in-depth scrambling to find anything to fill my list out with. Um... Oh, shit. I I deleted the... uh... Hold on. I got to go back back and then this i deleted the uh, formula out of that there we go so do you think mature games are going to be on i i personally don't but i don't know shit about shit obviously okay well then i'm gonna assume mature games are gonna be on and uh Let's go with Conker's Bad Fur Day. That's that's a rare game. Is it? Yeah. And it's mature. <laughs> so that's, that you, there have, we you go. got a double banger for yeah. that definitely not being on here. And, but hey, good pick. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 
And uh, let's see what else we got. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Earthworm Jim. Ah, uh, I mean, I think I played that on either Sega or PlayStation. I that was definitely it. a Super Nintendo game for me. Was it? Yeah. Maybe it must have been Sega. I'm gonna go with that pack-in title, which I just I just deleted again. Yes, I just deleted the formula again. Stay out of the actual spreadsheet. I gotta put a lock on that stuff. Uh, Major League Baseball featuring Ken Griffey Jr. There's not as much licensing to worry about in that one because they had a deal with the MLB, but not the MLB Players Association. So no real baseball players are in that game. They were all based on real baseball players, and you had a team editor that you could put names in for. So you could just go in there and edit you know, the teams and have all the real baseball players. But I feel like there has to be a sports game on here. There's been in the past some sports games so that's my pick okay steve, Steve-O, you got, you got two, two picks for you i was gonna say ryan you and i both have a mature pick because i picked turok so yeah so they're definitely uh, gonna put turok one. definitely has a better chance than conquer's bad fur day what no uh i'm gonna do blast corpse and bomberman 64 no i already have bomberman ah fuck uh blast corpse is Another rare game? I don't care if there's anything wrong with it. (laughs) Sarah's going to bed soon. I can't keep staring at these fucking charts. I got like 20 (laughs) more games to pick. That's just what I'm going with. Yeah, that Uh, was another it's another rare game. It's a good game, but uh I don't so the now I'm looking at everything else and it's not even telling me who made it because the top forty five games we already picked everything made by Nintendo. The other third of them are rare games, and the last third of them are things that we know aren't going to be on there because they're all like WWF wrestling games or Tony that, Hawk's. That didn't so, stop Max to last time around. I mean, nope. he was wrong, but it didn't yep. stop him. Nope, I tried. Nope. I certainly That's tried. <laughs> I, I've got like three other picks that we didn't do, and then my last resort is just pick anything for me that has a sequel we didn't pick yet. <laughs> Alright, so, you're still uh on you the still are, you still are up. Fine. Blast Corpse and uh Star Wars episode one racer. Two Star Wars games. We should put money on this you I wouldn't put money on this. I don't know what I'm doing. <clears throat> All right, uh, to keep the things moving along, I'm going to go with Vigilante 8. It was like a Twisted Metal knockoff. Excuse me. Um, okay. I am going to go with... Let's see. Xena, Warrior Princess, The Talisman of Fate. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's going to be on... Um, what that else we got? you know, maybe next week. I think we should bust out the old emulator and play some Xena Warrior Princess Talisman of Fate. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna pick a game I picked for their PlayStation One, uh, SimCity 2000. Uh, after I make my two picks, I'm gonna disappear for uh, like five minutes. That's fine. Well, we'll probably be done right after this anyway. So, unless you have some more to talk about, yeah. Uh, Which I do no, know. I I can't even pick any more games, let alone. No, I mean we can go. We can change topics if you want, but we got about eight minutes left in the stream before we hit our normal cutoff time. But uh, I don't care. I just need to go say good night. All right. So let me pick a, pick a thing here, quick. What do we want? What do we want? Um, you got two picks left. I'm going to throw out two just absolute, absolute be on there again to piss off the people on the PlayStation. Destruction Derby. 
I'm going to go with Resident Evil 2, the game that actually people wanted to be on the PlayStation Classic. It's a mature rated game and probably not going to be on there. It's funny. All right, I'm going to pick Dr. Mario 64. Good pick. And I don't know how we managed to let that slip this far. Yeah, it didn't appear anywhere until I wound up on the Metacritic listings of games, what people actually like to play. And then I'm going to pick uh, Fushigi no Dungeon Futari no Shuren 2 Oni Shurai Shurenjo. <laughs> uh, what's the second letter in that? It's F U S H I G I. I don't have that in my list. Yeah, I don't see is that. There, is there list. another name that I can look up? That's not uh, even on the list of N64 games. This game was an entry in the Mystery Dungeon series released oh. in Japan in 2000. This probably wasn't localized uh, for America, I... but I'm going for the JP pickup. <laughs> well, try again, because I can't find it. Um, I, Where was my random other just, one? Just search for anything that has the word 64 in the title, and you're, you're good. How about uh... Destruction Derby 64? Nobody saw that coming for the uh, PlayStation Classic. No, you know what? I'm going to take Ridge Racer. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> That's actually, I was thinking we did not have enough racing games. On. Yeah, well, I want them to put Ridge Racer on both the the PlayStation uh, and the, Super, or the Nintendo 64. <laughs> All right, so I have right, a little, I, I have a little theory. I'll be that... right back. Whatever your theory is, I'm, I'm sure I either disagree or agree with it. But... All right, go ahead. That's probably pretty safe. Again, Rare, owned by Microsoft, but one of the best-selling games and most beloved games on the Nintendo 64 was Mm Banjo-Kazooie. There was some rumors floating around that he might appear in Smash Brothers. Yep. With that fuzzy picture thing, or was that before Mm -hmm. that? That, What's that? That fake leaked picture? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was completely fake. But we still have five DLC characters that need announced yet. Mm-hmm. Huh. So you going with uh, Banjo Kazooie? Uh, uh, no, I'm going with Quest sixty four. Hmm. Um, you get the okay. last pick. Yep, and you've already picked nonsense for the last three pick two picks so okay well i'm gonna get a serious pick here for the last one okay it's um donald duck going quackers (laughs) (laughs) can uh while steve's away can you pull up donald duck going quackers so we can see what that game looks like uh sure like a youtube video of it yeah yeah all right what's going on what happened uh, Mex is not taking this seriously at all, and we're, we're going to see what uh, what abomination he just picked as his hey, last pick. I'm still pissed that you couldn't find Fushigi no Dungeon. With Wix, you can create oh a. Oh my perf- god! Sorry, we have to watch so an ad on YouTube first. Stunning. Just go to Wix.com. The best part well, is you can- at least they're okay, we getting paid for. It's an Ubisoft game. Donald Duck going quackers. I've got a good feeling about this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on. Look at this. Look at this 3D interactive gameplay. Hold on, let's, I will let's in skip a couple forward. seconds when I uh, can see where you're at. I'm a couple seconds behind and lag. It looks very much like uh, Crash Bandicoot. That this, I think this is Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> they just reskinned it. I want I want Donald Duck going quackers to be on this. Oh, he ran into some vines or something. Some thorns. He's crossing a finish line. I guess that's a checkpoint, maybe. He stepped on a skunk. Uh, I guess it's a, more of a side scroller than it is the front, you know, the, the Crash Bandicoot style, like run towards the screen or uh, But yeah, it, it's pretty much a hundred percent that that's gonna be on. No, guarantee hundred percent. Lock it up. 
Um, I'd say that if there is a Nintendo 64 classic, I I would wait. I think we have probably like 75% of the games on the thing. If if not more. I'm sure there's a glaring omission that we completely missed, but I, I'm pretty happy with the list. Yeah, I mean, unless like they do go go out with like all the rare games and whatnot. Um... I mean, they they really. I mean that <clears throat> they have been buddy buddy with Microsoft lately. You know, there's Microsoft owns Minecraft. They've been putting Mario characters in Minecraft. They are doing cross play. They're doing all sorts of good stuff, being friends. So maybe Xbox will do the cool thing and throw some rare games their way. I hope so, because I put at least one on my list. Ooh. Yeah, with Donkey Kong 64, which, if anybody's watching this, is a good game. And I will argue to the death that that, for the time, was a fantastic game. And I don't care if the collection was too complex for your little brains. Donkey Kong 64, good game. Hey, off topic, how yep. goddamn big is Destiny 2? Uh, 100 gigabytes. Uh, yeah. 80. 80. Make space. Was it 80? I, I did delete WoW. I did delete Hearthstone. I did delete, like, everything. Hearthstone is only, like, a 2 gigabyte game. <laughs> Pretty sure you could have left that one on there. Yeah, I mean, I only have, like, 30 gigabytes on my hard drive in the first place. So I just had to clear out space. Gotcha. I... It, the... it also took me like two hours to download. So, well, I started it as soon as we were done talking about it, and I'm sitting at about the halfway point, and it says 38 gigs remaining. Mm -hmm. I was like, shit. So, I don't know if it's. It wouldn't like... have downloaded if you didn't have space for it. No, no, no. But, uh, like, Steam, when you download a game, I'm pretty sure even before you start downloading it, it, like, corners off that space so if you need a hundred gigabytes before it even downloads it your hard drive will be like yeah you only got one left so i was looking at it and i'm like well how big is it because i'm slowly running out but if it already like flagged it then i'm i'm good because uh i've got a 500 gig ssd but there's only 146 left on it which is it's rare for me but i've got a whole bunch of big games on here Oh man, Xena Warrior Princess, <clears throat> the Talisman of Fate is an absolute banger. It's a fucking fighting game. Is it? Yeah, it's like a a three dimensional movement. Uh, I guess like a Tekken style fighting game. Is and it gonna it... be better than Revelations? Yeah, everything's better than Revelations. We don't talk about that anymore. I wanted to finish it. Maybe I'll do it someday when I forget I have it again. Well, we've well, reached the end of the show where uh, most people would go to, uh, you know, some chat questions. Uh, but we only got one chat question. Yeah. And it was from uh, Fuck Cops. <laughs> and it was, yo, blunts or joints? Um, I'm going to pick a third option and go bowls, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go also with a third option and say edibles Ooh, that's fun um i don't want to lose my job so i don't do any of that well that that's a good thing because drugs are bad well unless so, you're in uh, canada they legalized it up there uh, yeah i well, think they, like michigan legalized it too yeah they just legalized it in michigan which is why i said edibles because uh sarah had a sinus infection recently and can you got her a whole pile of weed no, no, she she can't be around the smoke at all. She complained at me forever after we got done at your party, mm -hmm. because on our way out, um, Ryan, you and somebody else were smoking out in the garage as we were walking by, and I stopped to like chat with you for a second, and some of the smoke wafted over to her, and it like set off whatever was going on in her sinuses because. It happened over the summer. We went to the Flavor Fest, and somebody was smoking a cigar near her. And immediately after that, it triggered like a sinus infection that lasted like a month. 
and now she's got that thing where she just can't smell smoke. It instantly gives her like a headache, and oh, she's just... one of those one of those people that just walks near somebody smoking thing. Yeah, pretty much. Like it, she, it used to not bother her at all, but ever since that just like killed her for a month, it's she can't do it anymore. So, uh, if it ever became legal in Pennsylvania, like they're trying to, uh, it'll it, get it'll get there. Well, yeah, the the popular support is at like fifty four percent, but uh, Tom Wolf didn't want to do it. Not this close to an election, but no, he's he got, wanted. He's got four years. Yeah, well, he just got reelected, so it's yeah. He he literally just said Pennsylvania's not ready for it. But if they waited like three three months, he'd be like, Pennsylvania is ready for it. You know, you're, I'm ready for it. Our sheets just got alcohol like a week yeah. ago, so we're ready for it. Yeah, well, I, Pennsylvania of all places is ready for it. We have a state store. We have an infrastructure that's already set up. Yeah. They could just push that all that booze sale to the grocery stores and, and Walmart to the world and just open up, turn all those state stores into weed stores and we wouldn't have to pay taxes on anything. Yeah. And I mean, by the time it's like fully legalized and they have places selling it in Michigan, we'll probably be up there to go visit some relatives. So <laughs> I like, we're going to, we're going to have most of the time spent with the child, but usually there's like one night that we get to go out with our friends and we'll play some hardcore D and D or whatever else we got. I think the last time we just didn't have anything prepared. So we went to Walmart and bought life, the stupid spin one. And then it's like, you, you get kids. Did, and a job did you, and a house. did you, well, hold on a second. Did you go to college or did you uh, get a job right away? Uh, no, I always go to college. Got to go to college. It's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the money that you end up losing in the long run, I mean, if you die right away, yeah, then well, you're going to work right away is good. But. Are you watching you could... this Xena gameplay, by the way? Of course I am. Okay, I'm just wondering. I I lament that you can't get classic life anymore because the edition that we bought is like totally sells out. Like you you get a vacation and you flip over the card and it's like TripAdvisor sent to you on this <laughs> this thing and it's like you you picked up a car. It's a Chevy Blazer. Blah blah blah. It's like totally just ads everywhere. But yeah. uh, I because you can't trade salaries or there's something with salaries this time around. And that was a crucial part of my plan when we used to play life way back in the day. Cause if somebody would inevitably get the hundred thousand dollar, the max, and then somebody would get like a $20,000 and then there'd be something in between that the other two idiots got. And I was like, you always want to steal the amount of money from the person in second get like the 80 or 90 and leave the guy with 100 alone because if you're the guy who has the most you're going to get stolen from next whereas if you just take that like high to mediocre amount nobody's ever going to steal it and you're just always going to get that money you have a, a lot of strategy build up for life i can Dude. appreciate that yeah it was it was a good game that's completely randomized because <laughs> it's all about the stupid fucking spinner and land on but yeah, I, I enjoyed that What'd game. Oh, man. Is there fatalities in this game? I don't think so. Uh, I would highly doubt it because Xena oh. and Hercules were like family-friendly kind of shows. Uh, she just summoned a lava stream out of the floor. Yeah. I don't know how family-friendly that is. Well, did anybody <laughs> die? Did anybody get burned? Not yet. Uh, no. Okay. This guy's is throwing it... like ninja stars. Is there blood? Uh no. No. Ah, oh, no. There's not gonna be fatalities if there's no blood. There was fatalities in the Mortal Kombat games before you put the blood code in. So could I you mean, still do? Could you still do fatalities if you didn't put the blood code in? Or was uh, that something that you had to have no, the blood code in for? It was like just an uppercut, I think. Like you just got uppercut and died. Like that was it. Oh, yeah, I I somewhat doubt that if you couldn't. If you couldn't see blood, they're not going to let you rip a guy's head off with the spine dangling below. I mean, this game is definitely going to be on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might need to... I, I, I was going to get an emulator so we could play this next week, but I would feel bad stealing money from such a fantastic game. So I might need to go out to uh, Saturday's market this weekend for like five and bucks. try to get a copy of this. 
hey, let me know if you go. Maybe we'll uh, meet you there. It's literally um, just down the road from us. We can go. <laughs> we can go look for dumb shit together. I gotta. I gotta find something to do. My wife works this weekend, so I have to be quiet. Uh, I don't think we have any plans, and I think Sage would want to get out of the house, so why not? Well, I'll be in touch. What time is that open till? Uh, I want to say like late afternoon is when they start packing up. There, they start super goddamn yeah, early. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not all about that. <clears throat> yeah, there's there's no point. Uh, really, it's just how much traffic do you want to get involved in, and that place is never really that bad anyway. Mm-hmm. All right, boys. Well, I think this reaches the end of the third episode of our completely untitled Wednesday night project. We need uh, we need somebody to come in and be our hero and name this for us. Bunch of dumb fucks talking about stupid shit. Watching Xena, Warrior Princess, Talisman of Fate gameplay. We we could do you want to be the, the premier Xena, Warrior Princess, Talisman of Fate podcast? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good thought, but no. No. Uh, we can end the podcast, but I want to talk to you guys about uh, Destiny when we're done. Okay. All Sounds right. good. All right. I'm going to look forward to some Destiny streams. Uh, we're not good at it, but they'll be up. Yeah. Adios. Right. Take care, guys.